Agatha Christie. What power? That's me. Welcome to About Time, a Doctor Who podcast. I'm Stephen, and I've been a Doctor Who fan since 2005. And I'm Ben, and I've never seen the show before. Now we're watching and discussing every episode of the revived series, and quite frankly, it's It's about about time. time. Spiffing day, isn't it? Top hole. Beep, beep, beep. How are you? I'm okay. What's been going on? Um, we went to Shoppy. Yes. We had chocolate. Yeah, time of recording, it's we... just been the Easter weekend. And I should just clarify when we say Shroppy, we mean Shropshire. Shroppy. Where my parents have just bought a house, so we went to uh, visit it and visit them. Interrogate it. Yeah, and stay there for the weekend. Mm-hmm. Very nice, wasn't it? Very, very nice. Um, my show's over now. Your show is over. Yes, Blythe Spirit. Um, it went very well. It did go very well. You came to see it on the Friday? I did. Did you enjoy it? I did. <laughs> you have to say that. It was a bit long. It was long, It is, and we cut it down from what it should have been, but I was pleased with it. Anywho, uh, this week we've watched episode seven of series four, The Unicorn and the Wasp. Yes, the unicorn and the wasp. Ben's face is not good. No, no, no offence. I mean, <laughs> your facial expression is not good. Ugh. No, you're gorgeous. Ugh. But I take it you, you weren't a fan of this episode. Bits I liked, bits, bits you I liked, didn't like. Bits you didn't like, okay. I actually really like it. It's very silly and very cheesy. Yeah. But um, I always enjoy watching it. Yeah. No, Just... let's, let's, no, let's say something nice. Say something nice about it. Okay. I liked the concept. By which you mean? Like Agatha Christie and... This is probably one of my... This is probably one of the better historical figures that I've enjoyed. Okay. They, I think they tend to be hit and miss. Okay. You didn't enjoy um, Queen Victoria or Shakespeare. Yeah. But I think you enjoyed the Dickens one. Mm, I don't know. I can't remember. Mm. Too long ago. They tend to do a lot of writers historical writers don't they yeah for me i don't mind the silliness like it, have you ever seen the film clue i haven't but i imagine i know it's yeah yeah isn't it based on the board game yeah which in this country we call cluedo yeah but yeah it's got that like tongue-in-cheek a bit silly a bit satire yeah. a bit all those type of things that i can get on board with that's fine yeah. i did find bits funny for me I felt like the writing was massively clunky. Okay. Like, for, for to, to pull that off, you ha- it has to be slick for me. Yeah. It has to be, like, certain sentences would drag me out of the story. Right. You commented when uh, they were all being interrogated. Oh, my and God. And everyone was like, oh, let me see. Where was I? Can't you remember? But I think because it, it, is, it is meant to be a comedy and it's almost meant to be a parody of the genre. And I do think... It just sort of fits them it being like... It happened five minutes ago, Stephen. Yeah, but it's it's supposed to be funny. <laughs> I think it's funny. It wasn't. Okay. It was silly and clunky. For me, if you're going to do that, you need really good actors that can get it. Yeah. Didn't get it. Who was not, who was not a funny actor then? The man, the gay man, wasn't that great. Oh, yeah. The lady who read something wasn't so great. She was better once she... Own the Cockney accent. Yeah. Um, oh my god. My biggest thing that got my go mm. is how fucking literal the title was. Oh yeah. Well no, like, there wasn't a literal unicorn. I mean the wasp. Yes. Oh, it's called this this. Let's do a massive fucking wasp. I think it came the other way around. I don't think they said, right, we're gonna call it the unicorn and the wasp, and then I put a wasp in it. I didn't like that the 30 seconds in you saw a wasp. No, do you know, I thought that and I thought that I wrote that down because obviously I've seen this episode many times, but I was quite surprised. I didn't realise that they showed the wasp so early. I just personally think that just like... It give, it kind of takes the fun out of it in a yeah, way. Yeah, and it's also a bit like... Literally before the opening titles, you get a flash of wasp. And yeah. it's like, if they'd not done that and just had him be murdered, like, and you don't see who does it. Yeah, it would play more into the, the trope. Yeah, that would be much better. Yeah. So that was odd. Um, Vespa. Vespiform. Reminds me of my favourite Pokemon, one of my favourite Pokemon of all time. Yes. Which is called... Beedrill. No. 
Well, you did comment on Beedrill. Oh my God. The thing looks like Beedrill. Yeah. Like, just needs two massive pointy things. So which Pokemon did it remind you of? Um, Vesperquen. Oh, I see. Well, you must, you realise Vesper is yeah, I know, from the Latin it's for to wasp. Do with wasp. Yeah. Isn't there, isn't there a motorbike or something called a Vespa? Again, mm-hmm. with that buzzing, droning sort of sound. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, remind you of that, but she's cool. She has like a dress that's made out of honeycomb. Cool. Is she always female? Yes. Oh, that's unusual, isn't it? The bee, the, so you've got Combi, who it evolves from. Okay. And Combi only can evolve into Bespiquen when it's female. Okay. And you've only got a 12.5% to get a female in the wild. Right. Um, and I'm glazing over here. I was that child, well, teenager when it came out, who slavered honey trees with honey <laughs> and would wait and come back to the tree and try and try and try and get a Vespaquen. Okay. Well, a can be. And all the times I've done it, I've never got a much lack. You might as well be speaking another language. I do, actually, I do know Pokemon and I liked it, but I... This comes comes from a later generation than yeah, when I was playing it. This is Diamond and Pearl. Yeah, I didn't, um, didn't play this. You're more. I was gold. Johto. Yeah, I played gold and I played sapphire. Yeah. And I've played a little bit of diamond because you got it for me on the Switch. Yeah, I do enjoy Pokemon. I'm probably a little bit less now that I'm not so much in the world because I can't afford to keep up with the game. Well, yeah. Um, Anywho. <clears throat> Any boo. This is not a Pokemon podcast. I wanted to say near the beginning that. Just try and get it out of the way. The writer of this episode is Gareth Roberts, who also wrote the Shakespeare Code. Um, a turf. He is a turf. He's an absolute piece of shit. So, you know, I'm just acknowledging that, that the writer is an arsehole, but we don't need to dwell on it. Boo! Yeah. Um, when the Doctor and Donna stepped out of the TARDIS at the beginning, yeah. and she was in a pink top, yeah. you said, I love that she took clothes. Yes, I do love that she took clothes. Makes her real, makes yeah. her like, makes makes it feel like time has passed. Yes. Like, makes it feel like they're not back to back. Whereas Rose and Martha... Rose did take clothes. She packed a bag. Well, Rose, you dirty little scallywag, learn to wash your clothes. Yeah, she's got quite a lot of outfits No, she, she doesn't. She does. She doesn't. I could show you a picture of all the outfits she wears. She wears loads. She wears pink. Mar- Martha jeans. was the one who had one outfit basically stayed for most of her series. Ugh. That, that jacket. Know about hygiene. Mm. Um, but then, yeah, you, I guess you liked the outfit she was wearing and then she only wore it for like two scenes and then she went into her flapper costume. Which was a bit like, um, Donna. Yes. What a fucking ugly dress for the start off. Well, she just had to grab what she could from the TARDIS wardrobe. Oh, do you think that's from the TARDIS wardrobe? Well, where else did she get it from? I thought she owned it. I don't think so. Why would she have a 1920s dress? Okay, I can let her off from the TARDIS wardrobe. Yeah, but you thought it was an ugly dress. Yeah. I I love 1920s fashion. I love the fringe. Mm-hmm. I like the rebellion of the 1920s. Yeah, yeah. the short hair. Yeah, the short hair, the the flapper dresses, the raising, he- the raising hemlines, mm-hmm. um, which then shot back down um, as your time goes on. Mm. But... Um, it show. It, I, I just think it shows that women, young women, have always had this rebellious streak in yeah. them to fight against pr- oppression, and that is that is really evident in fashion. Mm. Like if you look at the nineteen six nineteen fifties nineteen sixties circle skirt, teenagers didn't want to be like their mum anymore, mm. and it's always that way, isn't it? Yeah, even today, our generation wears quite bold fashion. When you got the emos, mm. I wasn't an emo. I had the hair, but didn't have the clothes <laughs> because I f- wanted to fit in with a friendship group. That oh. yeah, um, I had the hair. Ben the emo. And I was emotional. I was <laughs> unstable. But, well, yeah, that's yeah. being a teenage for you. Anywho, so let's talk about the characters in this large ensemble cast. Professor Peach. Any relations, princess? <laughs> you you said that joke during the episode and then you were like, I should save that for the podcast yeah. and you'll have to laugh. So. I know it's not funny, <laughs> I know, but I thought it was. But you know what it's actually a parody of? Professor, Professor Plum. Plum. Yeah. Professor Plum. Wouldn't it be really apt if he was a young Professor Peach and he had a nice peach? Well, we didn't see his bum. He might have an amazing bum. No, I don't think so. 
Bums tend to sag if you don't look after them. Well, how do you, he might have looked after his. I don't think so. You're being very presumptuous. I am being very mm. presumptuous because bum care <laughs> has only started with the squattage. Okay. Well, Professor Peach might have been hitting the gym and squatting. I don't think so. I'm sorry, Professor And then Peach, the, the Reverend so. comes in and finds him and he's like, oh, Professor Peach. No, he's like, let me sting you. <laughs> Why did they kill him because he discovered his birth certificate? Because he was going to expose the fact that he was her son. Yeah, and that's a good thing. He gets to be with mummy. Yeah, but he was he realised who he was at that point, didn't he? And she accepted her lover who was a fucking insect. Yeah, but he was oh my also god. a murderer. Oh my god. Did the baby buzz in her? No. Because lava lavacle. Yeah, because remember the doctor said that he only broke the genetic lock when he got really angry. Oh, how convenient. Um, but yes, we had Lady Edison played by Felicity Kendall. OK, go through them and I will give you a ranking. I'll give you a, a score of their performance. OK. Oh, the score is going to be out of ten. OK. Oh, so Professor Peach, you... Five. OK. Fel- uh, Lady Edison. Seven. OK, nice to see Felicity Kendall in Doctor Who. It was nice. I thought it was Zoe Wanamaker at first. Yes, yeah, she does have a similarity. And I was a bit like, oh. It's Cassandra. Cassandra. Um, yeah, anywho. Um, the Colonel. Colonel Hugh. Four. Okay. He reminded me of um, the kind of stock character that, you know, when I do an impression of my dad, I do like a caricature Major of my dad. Backdrop. Yeah. And uh, my dad says it sounds like... Someone called Major Bagshot. And yeah, I love that bit when um, the doctor says uh, that he's laced the soup with pepper. And the colonel goes, ah, thought it was jolly spicy. Oh my God, how British. Yeah. Roger. Who's that? That's the gay son. Uh, Three. And Davenport, the boy he was with. One. What? <laughs> I mean, he oh, he can't polish a silver tray. Did you no, see? No, he fucking can't. <laughs> it was painful to watch in the foreground. You can't do it with a fucking dry cloth. <laughs> it's called he acting. Was, um, he was very attractive, though. No, he was not. He was to me. He's no. my hottie of the week. I would take the priest over him. Oh, well, even with, if he turns into a wasp? Mm, maybe not. Yeah. No, I think Davenport's cute. And I especially love that bit when, you know, when they're chasing the wasp and then it disappears and they all come out of their rooms. Oh, his head there. Davenport pops out of the same room as Roger. Did you notice the line that the colonel said? There's been no children here for years. Highly unlikely there will be. He gave them a lip. Yeah. (laughs) Just to show that um, parents, they may not accept it, but they don't want to kill their child. They don't want their child to be killed because of things Mm. that he can't help. Mm. He did seem a bit pissed off about it, though. Wouldn't it be amazing if tomorrow some, like, geneticist or someone actually says that it's actually being gay isn't a choice and it is written in your coding? Mm. And it would be a bit like, well, if they can prove that, I'd be like, Auntie Sally, who's down the road, mm. who is... Raising her Bible into the air and saying gays should be killed. I'm like, bitch, God chose me to be this way. Yeah. Sit back down. Yeah. I thought it basically was proven that it was not a choice. But, oh, really? But, but I then, think so. but all, yeah, I, cause you, I know it's not. You can't take, you can't take a, like a DNA test and be like, oh, it says I'm gay. Like, uh, because I think it's a combination of things, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, my, per- okay, I'm not a scientist, but I have a theory. Right, here we go. We are brainwashed from a young age to think certain ways. Yes. Um, Are you you talking about who who you are attracted to? Yeah, who we are attracted to, who we are in society. So I was a boy. I know. Let me say, I I was male. I was I was male at birth. I have a penis. Um. I'm just going to cut that out and just put that on a loop okay. on, out on Instagram. <laughs> Society said to me, no, you must like cars. You must like wrestling. You must like monster trucks. I don't know. Farming equipment. <laughs> diggers. <laughs> anyway, get to the point. And I'm like, bitch, no. Anywho. So they think society pushes these pressures onto children. Yes. And 
pressures have become higher and higher and higher as the years go on. Because, because there is starting to be a bit more flex, this is why I think children have a lot of mental health issues, is because they just don't know where they sit. Mm. They just don't know where, who they are. Mm. And we are trying to tell a child that is still work. Their cognitive brains are developing. Mm. Their own personality is developing. We are, and like, we are, we are trying to imprint um, stereotypes onto children. Mm. Look at, look at films. You, heterosexual, back in the 90s, heterosexual couples was prevalent. You are, you, you are, you see heterosexual couples kiss. You see heterosexual couples hold hands down the street. Yeah. You see it, not only that, you see it in cartoons. Yeah. You see all of these different types of media, uh, advertisement, billboards, posters. We see all of this media and society has been like, well, this is what we've been doing for years. No, you're brainwashing society, you're brainwashing children to think that that is the normal and that is the norm. Whereas if we just let children be children, if we just let them like, yes, okay, if they are a boy, um, if they are a, a, a male at birth, yeah, okay, maybe you, maybe raise them with that in mind. So there's something, there's some anchor but the moment they say no, this is not for me. Mm. Don't push it. Yeah, it's it's fine. It's you know when when they when they if they start to explore and go off into yeah. cars, lots of parents will just say no, that's for girls, not you. Yeah, what, but you sh- you should just let them do what they want to do. It's a bit like it's a bit like I bet you there are hundreds of millions millions of men out there who have played with their sisters Barbie and who are still heterosexual. Yeah. Get over yourselves. It's a fucking doll. Yeah. It's a piece of plastic. Literally, Ben's brandishing knitting needles at me while he's yeah. saying all this. It's a, <laughs> it's a piece of plastic. Let children be children. But do you know what annoys me um, is this thing of where um, straight people say, just let children be children, stop ramming sexuality down their throats. But then actually they're the ones who they dress their babies in like clothes that say yes. little heartbreaker. <coughs> and like, or they, they see a boy playing with a girl and they say, oh, is she your girlfriend? And like, no, yeah. what, what pisses me fucking right off is children's fashion. Yeah. It's some fashion companies are designing clothes. Like you say, say slogans, which aren't appropriate for children. Like little sluts. Cut out. Like- <laughs> Well, I, I don't think they've gone quite far. that far, but yeah. But like, they're taking, they are trying to make mini me's from adult fashion. Yeah. And that's been a trend for a long time. Yeah, yeah. For in fashion. But I will tell you this, I'm not here for it. No. I'm not here for it. Children do not need to dress like adults. No. They just need functional clothes. Like I was on Instagram the other day. Yeah. And... There was this one mum who was saying what she was shopping for a child and she was holding up bathing suits and there were cutouts of the of, on the hips oh. on children's bathing suits. Why? No, why? we don't why? need why? that. Yeah. It's disgusting. It's ridiculous. Anywho, we've really digressed. <laughs> Anywho, I just want to say one thing. What really annoyed me about this is 2008 BBC failed us today. Oh, Yes. The, the affair between the two of them. Could have simply had a simple kiss. Yeah. Literally, the most we got to see was... You didn't even see their hands. Oh, you didn't actually, did you? No, you knew they were holding hands, but it was yeah. still cut. It was And all... I was a bit like, I was a bit like, do better. Yeah. It was all like little looks. The most explicit thing was him popping his head out of his bedroom. <laughs> if you could call it explicit. Yeah. I'm a bit like, I'm just a bit like sick and tired of this skating around Christian people. Mm. That if you are Christian and you watch this, by all means, believe God. I believe in some kind of benevolent figure within this universe. That's my choice. Is it Christianity? I don't know. I just believe that there is an almighty power. I think a lot of people believe... I believe God made me yeah. in his, in his yeah, perfection. Absolutely. I think a lot of people believe that. And actually, when you look at the different religions all around the world, it's possible to look at that and think there is something, there is some God, but it's so 
enormous that you can't comprehend it in your human brain. Yeah. And so the reason we have all these different religions is because it's been filtered by different cultures. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. And Personally, I don't. Though, I'm an atheist. This is the thing, like, this is the thing that I don't, I don't understand, is, like, the Bible was written... I'm going to have to do some really editing for yeah. this episode <laughs> because I'm talking about loads of shit. It's fine. The Bible was written, what, 2,000 years ago or more? Well, it depends which part of the Bible you're talking about, but I'm let's just say it was about, written a long time ago. I'm yes. talking about the Bible. Yes. I know there's different sections. Yes. And I don't like it's written like it's written two thousand years ago and plus. I would love it if Jesus came down to earth and said to everyone this is probably blast they're probably gonna slate me for this, <laughs> and said to everyone, You failed. You need to watch Russell T. Davies The Second Coming. Yeah. You have failed me because this this man over here, he believes in me. He treated everyone with respect. He never hated any on any Christians. He's never hated on anyone. And he's devoted himself to one man. And he's loved that man. And he's, his, his partner, his husband happens to be... Do you not get what I'm saying? I like, do, I do. This, don't slate people. No, absolutely. What you're co- So, side note, I just want to reiterate, you definitely need to watch Second Coming because that's basically it. Because um, literally, also, people are failing God yes, now. But people also, are using God to hide behind. Yes, th- that's the way it's always been. Because whether God exists or not, the Bible and religious texts were written by humans using human thoughts and human understandings. Yeah. 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 If if God exists, he doesn't care if you're gay or straight or whatever. It's the people who two thousand years ago, whatever it was, wrote it that thought it was wrong. Yeah, because. They couldn't comprehend the fact that this was out of the normal. Mm. It's the this. fact that humans, it's human nature, unfortunately, to always be like anything different is bad. Yeah. Because most people are straight. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with being gay, but because it's a smaller yeah. proportion of people, yeah. people automatically think, oh, that's not right. And then they start yeah. making these rules about that's, yeah. that's wrong. Let me, let me say this to our lovely followers. So I have worked with... A few Muslims in my time now. Yeah. I'm 31. I've worked, I've worked most of my adult life. I have worked with people from people of many different, many cultures. different yeah. cultures, many different religions. And not once have I ever had a homophobic comment from anybody of a different faith. No. Have you had but, any, have you had any from anyone regardless of faith? I've had, no, actually, I've had just some youths, some youngsters who feel like they have something up against, one up against me because Mm. of my choices. I'm like, do you know what? Fuck you. Mm. Because at the end of the day, you're going around with your hoods up, your hands down your trousers, (laughs) and you're you're yabbering your mouth off about things you don't know. Yeah. At At the end of the day... You have no, you have no rights to comment on anybody's personal life. I just wanted to say this. I had this, I was very close to a a Muslim woman and she taught me, I asked questions, she answered them. And I said said to her once, I hope you don't mind. She said, no, I don't, I like that you, you ask. Mm. I like that you want to educate yourself. Yeah. Because I knew that I was working in a multicultural town yeah. And a spe- a specifically, being just outside London, it's more multicultural from where I come from. Yeah. I felt like it was my job to in- educate myself. 100%. Not that... their job. No, you're absolutely right. And this is the thing. She knew I was gay. And she would say, how are you? And then do you know what she would do? She would say, how's Stephen? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Like... She was very accepting. Did she? Did she? Did she think it was right? I don't know. But she she understood that she respected my choice and I respected her choice. Absolutely. And that, if everyone could harness that mm. in this world, the world would be a better place to live in. Yeah. Sometimes I can understand why people hate this world, Stephen. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, this is why we watch things like Doctor 100%, Who. Hundred percent. Yeah. It's because we want to escape. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I really think we need to get back to the subject at hand. Yeah. But thank you for that. Yeah. 
we were in the middle of you um, scoring the characters. Oh, okay, let me carry on with that. <laughs> so we had um, Rabina Redmond, uh, who wasn't really called Rabina Redmond. No. It's a fake name. <coughs> Rabina? Yeah. Rabi- R-O-B-I-N-A. Oh. Uh, four. Okay. Now, did you recognise the actress? No. Felicity Jones. Oh, my she played, God. Um, Ethel Wiseman. Ethel. Mooncrest. Hallow. Ethel Hallow in The Worst Witch. Oh, yeah. In the, was it the 90s? Yeah. Yeah, which we watched on uh, Britbox. I could tell it was the same actress when we watched Worst Witch. I was like, oh, yeah, it's, it's Miss Scarlet. Or whatever. Not Miss Scarlet. Rabina yeah. Redmond. Yeah. You're good at this, though, aren't you? What, recognising actors? Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Especially when it's someone who's been in Doctor Who, because I'll have watched it so many times, I will be able to recognise their little facial quirks and expressions. Oh. Um, and then Reverend Go Lightly. Um, Reverend Go Lightly. <laughs> What's so funny? That's what she said. <laughs> oh, Reverend Go Lightly. Yes, I get it. <laughs> anyway, what, what's what's his score? Uh, of acting? Uh, six. He was one of the better ones then. Yeah, really? I liked him. He, I didn't like these fake accents. Like, oh, golly, oh, top notch. <laughs> But that's part of it, isn't it? It's the it's the yeah. uh, parody, and obviously we have to talk about Agatha Christie herself. Uh, nine. She's brilliant, isn't she? I thought she was good. I thought she carried the episode very well. Yes. Yeah, I liked her a lot. So the actress is Fenella Woolgar. Um, and actually, fun fact: she was cast on David Tennant's recommendation. She's a friend of his, and they'd worked together on a film, and um, they were looking for an Agatha Christie, and David Tennant said, "Oh, what about Fenella Woolgar?" And, uh, yeah, they they had her in to read and she was brilliant. I just find her very wholesome. She reminds me of, like, an English teacher. An English teacher? Maybe, I think she specifically reminds me of a particular English teacher I had at A-level. Oh. I think that's why, but, yeah. Miss Go Lightly. Mrs Anson. If you're watching this, Miss Anson. Oh, my God, I've got a funny story about that. Mrs Anson, she married, so she was Miss... Something else, I forgot what her, her name was before. But she married my other teacher called Mr. Anson. And um, he left, but then she carried on. And then she was going to leave because they were having a baby. Yeah. And then I left sixth form and we had our kind of final, um, like, leaving ceremony thing. And she came to that and she'd already had the baby by that point. And she came and she said to me, um, um, I hope you won't be offended, but um, I just have to tell you that we've called our baby's favourite teddy, Stephen Willis. <laughs> I was like, okay, why is that? Um, and she said, basically, it's a it's a mouse with a really, really long scarf that made, made them think of a Doctor Who scarf. And they said to themselves, What's it, what, what should we call it? And because they knew I was a Doctor Who fan, they said, it's got to be Stephen Willis. And then the baby took a great like likening to it and uh, took it everywhere. And, if, and it's just every day, it's like, where's Stephen Willis? Where's Stephen Willis? Oh, my God. <laughs> it was just the funniest thing. I've been immortalised in Teddy teddy form. Anywho, so when it comes to the real Agatha Christie, didn't you watch a documentary about her about a year ago? Uh, Yeah. You took a bit of an interest, didn't you? Oh, yeah, and then I read a book. What book? I read Murder at Styles. Have you only read the one? Yeah. Oh, okay. And have you got any interest in reading any others? Um, When I see Miss Marple's first book, Mm. when I see that in the library, because I don't plan to buy them because there's a lot of them. Yeah. I just plan to, like, here and there read them. Yeah. I enjoyed it. When we were in Shropshire, we went to a bookshop in Ironbridge. We um, did. That's got lots of uh, secondhand books and stuff. Yeah. And they have a whole massive section of Agatha Christie. And I was looking for a specific book. I was looking for Death in the Clouds. Because I was really hoping it was going to be the edition that he shows her at the end. With the big wasp outside the plane. Um, I didn't find exactly that edition, but it did have a wasp on the cover. Why is there a wasp? So it's not it's not actually about a giant wasp. It's about I think there is a wasp in the story, but it's symbolic on the cover that it's it's large. Oh. But it, I don't know the story, but I think it's um I think there's a wasp in it. Have you read it, Aggie? I haven't. I really like to actually. I just don't know where to start. First book. That's what I did. Yeah, but that might not be the best. So. The thing is, though, if it, if that's not the best, it's pretty darn good. You liked it. Yeah. What was it called again? Murder at Styles. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, I've watched plenty of the uh, adaptations. Yeah. I have a mum. Mum never liked Praro. And she David never liked Suchet. Marp. 
But she was very much a fan of like CSI. Oh, um, that's quite different. She watched Law and Order. Yeah. My parents and I watched the Kenneth Branagh um, Murder on the Orient Express. Yeah. Um, we, we enjoyed that. I haven't seen Death on the Nile yet, but yeah. By the yeah. way, did you pick up on them? Um, they mentioned Murder on the Orient Express. Yeah. And she was like, oh, what a fantastic. Yeah. But I was a bit worried because um, you don't like things being spoiled. And Donna said something that kind of spoils Murder on the Orient Express. I don't know if you picked up on it. No, I didn't. If you didn't, then I won't say anything. No, I didn't. I just heard Orion on the Express. Okay, fine. And Phew. I, uh, Phew. Because I I, I, all the way leading up to this episode, I was thinking, oh my God, if Ben hears that and gets spoiled, he's going to be furious. And thankfully it passed you by. Yeah. Um, I can be quite oblivious sometimes. You can, Well, yes. And obviously Agatha Christie really did disappear. She did. And it, to this day, we don't know where she went. It's supposed to be a bit of a mystery, isn't it? But clear, clearly it's something to do with her husband having an affair and if the, if her car was found by a lake and then she disappeared and then she was found a few days later and did wouldn't speak about it i'm guessing she was having a bit of a breakdown i'm sorry but this is a time when divorce was not deemed right mm. when you married you married for the long haul mm. even though henry the eighth was a bit of a diva and was like yo pope make my own church so i can get divorced so i can marry this chick <laughs> and to to the later the better. Yeah. They didn't act on it. Like, I think a lot of people were still, there was still this massive taboo There's on it. There's a stigma, yeah. Because people like to think that, like, Church of England is like, ooh, woohoo. <laughs> um, anyway, we're not a religious podcast. <laughs> no, we're not. It's too too tempting for them, I guess. You couldn't do an Agatha Christie episode and not include her disappearance in it. yeah. And what did I ask you? I thought, I literally thought halfway through, I was like, oh my God, is she going to go on an adventure with the Doctor? That explains her disappearance. Yeah. And the Doctor tried to get her back, but messed up by a few days. Yeah. yeah. That would have been funny. Wouldn't it be great to actually have like, like a series of like standalones? Mm -hmm. And it was just like the Doctor just like going on his merry way. And he doesn't have a, doesn't have like a, a regular companion, companion but yeah. like he gets matched up with... Famous people throughout history. Oh, okay, yeah. So like, so like a bit like, so we have we have Agatha this episode. So there could be there could be a Florence Nightingale episode. Mm. There could be many episodes. Yeah, you laughed a lot at uh, Donna's. You know, she was sort of breaking the fourth wall a bit and almost like commenting on the genre. She was eating popcorn. Oh, that. No, I, not that, that was amazing. I was thinking of the bit when um, they first, you know, when the doctor finds the vest form, the morphic residue. And she's like, she sort of rolls her eyes and she's like, the murderer is an alien. And he's like, it's not like we could go and see Charles Dickens and he's surrounded by ghosts at Christmas. And it's like the doctor who has actually done an episode of that. Yeah. This is what I love. Torchwood. Mm -hmm. I'm going to spoil Torchwood here for you, peeps. So if you haven't watched it, watch it. Um, in the episode where you've got in the countryside and you've got those creepy cannibals. Yeah. That's what makes that episode strong. And I think you said that in the episode. That it's not aliens. You think it's going yeah. to be. Yeah. So what do you think this episode would have been good if it was not an alien? Um, but it wouldn't have felt like Doctor Who then. No. I think Doctor Who needs it. Yeah. It needs, it needs it for its anchor. Um, because then it takes it... And it would have been too dark and serious if it had been just a regular human killing people. Yeah. yeah. And I don't understand why the vicar then suddenly killed the gay man. Um, he just got in the way. Yeah, I'm not sure, actually. I don't remember. I don't remember the reason. But yeah, stabbed him in the back. Um, did you notice that they slipped so many Agatha Christie titles into the dialogue? Yeah. How many did you spot? Um, not many. But I knew it was happening. Yeah, there were loads. And then she was reading. She was like, I was reading one of my favourite Agatha Christie books. And we're like, I personally think that Agatha Christie doesn't really have re readable ability. Oh, because you once you know the Once you know once you know the ending, I guess I guess you can then like Then you're looking for the clues, aren't you? It's yeah. so satisfying. But like for yeah. me that's I don't know. For me, I think that would be a bit boring mm. because that's half of the suspense for me was finding out yeah. how she wrapped the story up. Yeah. But on that note then, like, at what point did you twig that the vicar was the murderer? When they started talking to him. Oh, right. So you like, didn't realise before that. I thought that it was the red herring 
the lady. Oh, you thought it was going to be her? Not the lady lady, the other lady who was not the lady. You mean Rabina Redmond? Yeah. Yeah, the unicorn. You thought the unicorn and the wasp were the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. So for me, obviously having watched this many times, now when I watch it, you can see lots of little hints and clues that it's the vicar. And I feel, I thought you were going to guess it because there's a certain shot when they're eating dinner and the doctor says he's laced the soup with pepper and he says piperine traditionally used as an insecticide. There's a close up of the vicar and he sort of looks down at his soup and he's like, oh, and it's like, I thought that that shot gives it away, but you didn't, you didn't say anything. No, I don't think I was. So if you want to know my thoughts, I thought that the lady had birthed the wasp. Yes. And I thought that it wasn't, I thought it was, she was looking after it and like she was looking after it. It was her child and she was looking after it. Yeah. And now it's become a bit too. Oh, I see enraged. what you mean. Yeah. And it was stuck as a wasp. Yeah. But okay, it, yeah. I went off very in a different hand. Yeah, I can see that. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a series four episode of our podcast if I didn't tell you one of my favorite Donna moments. It's the bit when she first discovers the wasp and it stings through the door. Yeah. It's a giant wasp. What do you mean it's a giant wasp? I mean a wasp. That's giant. Oh, it's only a silly little insect. When I say giant, I don't mean big. I mean flipping enormous. <laughs> <laughs> so I will be really sad when this series ends. This is such a dream team. It is a dream team. And they've got this harmonious ability to work together. You can see why they, they wanted to bring them back. Yeah. yeah. To, they wanted to kickstart the, se- the new series yeah. well. Yeah. But that being said, mm-hmm. the giant wasp mm. did feel a little bit out of place. Yes. It is a little bit silly, but that's what I... The, the whole episode Fucking is a bit strange. silly. It's fucking strange. It is, it no, is. I'll tell you what they wanted, Stephen, mm. is they wanted to lace it in with a book. They wanted to lace Actually, it in yes, with a cloud. Because I remember the Doctor Who Confidential and Russell said that as a child, he was obsessed with this book, um, the cover that had the giant wasp on it. And he thought it was about a giant wasp and it turns out it wasn't. Mm. But I think that's why they chose to make it a wasp. Yeah. I do think it'd be stronger, like, I don't know. This is a very weird episode, and I think you've just got to take it for what it is. Exactly, yeah. And I, I, I really like it for what it is. I think um, that it's funny in places, good in places. They've got the, a, good, a good, the main three, I would call them. Like, it's always, if you notice, the, the structure is always, I always feel like, is Doctor, the Companion, and then a third. Who yeah. comes from that environment. Doctor and John are, like, looking for a third. Well, she kissed him. We saw you across the 1920s party and we liked your vibe. Um, Yes, she did kiss him. Um, I was going to mention that, the poisoning scene where he does his own antidote. That is so farcical. Like, obviously, you couldn't do that in any other episode. I like the bit when uh, he's he's trying to mime salt and she thinks cocktail shaker. She goes, what do you want, a Harvey Wallbanger? And he's already said it's only one word. And he just, he, he can speak because he's finished the walnuts. So he could just tell her what he needs. But he takes the time to say, how is Harvey Wallbanger one word? Like, it's so comedy. Yeah. Yeah, it is funny. And they've done a fantastic, they did that was, I don't like that type of comedy, but it was, it was all right. I, I think it's funny. It is funny. And you finally, you finally get my reference that I've made countless times before about copyright, Donna Noble, add it to the list. But it turns out Agatha lost her memory anyway. I mean, she remembered little bits, but yeah. Yeah. Also wanted to mention when Miss Chandra Kala gets the statue pushed oh on her. Oh my <laughs> fucking God. Love, you had time to move. Yeah, she stands there. I mean, you do freeze sometimes in moments It's a of... bit like, move, you blooming ass! Yeah. Yeah, I think she just froze in horror, as you do sometimes. I'm sorry, but she froze before it even fell. It just rocked a little bit. Oh, well. But do you know what's funny as well is like it, it must have hit her right on the head and on the face, but it didn't squash her face at all. And she only gets this tiny little dribble of blood. Yes. Out of her mouth. It's a bit like that would absolutely disfigure you. Yeah. You'd be unrecognisable. You'd be caved in like a cave. Yeah. You would be like jam on toast. <laughs> and then we've got the big denouement. 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 What's the denouement? 
it's the sort of moment when everything comes to a head. What does and, that mean? Huh? What does it, what's the actual words mean? Then, well, it, if you want to be fancy, I think it comes from French. I think it means the untying of the knot. And it's basically the point in the story when... Um, you untie a knot? Well, yeah, but it's in this case, it's the scene when Agatha was pacing up and down and sort of explaining it all. And you, you often get that in those kind of stories. It's very genre appropriate. And that's the bit where Donna was eating her popcorn or, mm. or crisps or whatever it was. So good. Um, Probably peanuts. Yeah. And she's like, so she killed them. Yeah. No. So he I, killed them. I like, no. I like the joke of them saying, like, it was you, Donna Noble. But the way it's executed is a bit clunky for me. Mm. And they tried it again with Agatha. Mm. Yeah, it's just a bit like, I can see what they were going for, but it doesn't quite land for me. And then you've got the Reverend transforming. Into a purple wasp. Do you know how absolutely ridiculous that is, that he does his buzzing in his speech? Because he's every time he says the letter Z, he's going zzzz, whereas the wasp's buzzing comes from its wings. Yeah. So it's completely ridiculous, but I still love it. <laughs> when he's like, put those zzz things zzz back where you found them. <laughs> It was a bit pathetic and a bit like, oh, my God. Yeah, he's just going to start going zzzz, and then the purple smoke comes up in front of him and then it clears and he's a wasp. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm a bit like, what in the Disney, Walt Disney, Disney, yeah. Disney yeah. are we doing here? What Disney the... wants his sideshow back. What in the Disney? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit like, what do you do? Fart out some purple dust so that you can transform? Yeah. Or it's like he's got a glittering powder and he's like... And <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the campus transformation ever. Yeah. And then um, I also wanted to just mention that as this episode was originally written, there was an extra aspect to it, which was then cut. Um, and it's available on the deleted scenes. Mm. And I'm really glad they cut it because it's so clunky. But they initially had it as a framing device at the beginning and the end of the episode scenes of old Agatha on her deathbed in a nursing home mm. and she's talking to a nurse and she's saying oh you know I, I can't explain it she's got this memory of um the doctor as she calls him the man in the brown suit which is one of her stories mm. um and then at the end the doctor and Donna go and visit her okay and it's really like Ugh, I don't know I think what they're trying to do is you know when she, Donna said about oh she never knew her books were any good I think yeah. they're trying to go to to her in the future and say, look, like, I, I I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think they might show her that that copy of the book where it was published in the year five billion and show her that her books go on. But it's a bit weird. I'm sorry. I think they don't publish books in the year 5,000. Paperbacks. Paperbacks. Probably to beam directly to your head and you've read it in 30 seconds. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, but it did say a facsimile edition. Maybe it's just like, you know, classic Classic replica or something, you know. Classic replica. Funny you should uh, mention the way fiction and books would be consumed in the far future, mm. given what the next episode is going to be. It's a two-parter. Daleks in Manhattan. We've had that, so no. Daleks in my book. Nothing library. to do with Daleks. The Cyberman Who Read. No. It's by Stephen Moffat. Um, this is the first time we've had a Moffat two-parter since The Empty Child. Oh. Which you really liked. I did. Uh, the first part is called Silence in the Library. Okay. Really good two-parter. Right. It's time to rank this episode. It's time to rank this episode. Where would you like to put Unicorn and the Wasp? Um, Just under Fires of Pompeii. Okay. So you actually liked it quite a bit. Yeah, it was. It was. It is. It is good. It's just sort of on the cusp, but cusp yeah. of the top half. Yeah, for me, I feel like the positives outweigh the negatives. I haven't really talked about the negatives, but I really don't like the CGI of the wasp. Um, but no. I think the characterization of Agatha makes it really good. Yeah, exactly. The other caricatures of her stock characters make it a bit intolerable sometimes. Yeah, but the thing is, it's a forty-five minute episode. And you have to have a large cast because it's that's the staple of murder mystery. Yeah, so then maybe it should have been written there. No, I think it was just you, you were never intended to get to know them that well. It was all just a bit of a parody, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Anywho, for me then, um, this is very tricky because 
if I'm ranking it in terms of objective quality, like do I think it's a good episode? Yeah. It's quite different to how much to whether I rank it on how much I actually enjoy it to watch yeah. it. I think I should do it on how much I enjoy it. Yeah. So I'm going to put it underneath gridlock and above the Christmas invasion, which makes it number 19. Your one was number 22, by the way, we didn't say. So it's actually quite similar, sort of in the middle. Mm. So that's that. That is that. Before we finish. Before we finish. We have to do. Patreon, 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 shout out. Patreon, 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 shout out. This is the time of the podcast where we remind you that we're on Patreon. We're so grateful to all the people who currently support us. We really are. And those people are. Louise. Louise. Jason. Jason. I'm just looking and none of the others have S's or Z's. Okay. So anyway. Philip. Philip. Joe. Joe. Tom. Tom. Oh my God, Ben. Louis. Louis. Michael. Michael. Ferner. Ferner. Heather. Heather. <laughs> Benny. Ben Caleb Caleb Monica Monica Amber Amber and Jay and Jay <laughs> This was a bad idea, it's not working. Oh Kaylee Kaylee Kaylee, Kaylee. and Kieran <laughs> And Kieran Steve has now turned into a goat. <laughs> Flashback to Maria. Let's not go there again. <laughs> By the way, I literally just remembered. I was gonna, I was gonna mention this, and I forgot. You know, last week we discussed the Doctor's daughter, the Doctor's ducky daughter. Um, I was watching the Doctor Who Confidential for that one, mm. and something interesting. You know, the half, the fish with the bubbles, mm-hmm. and we were having a whole conversation about how they speak and like whether Martha can understand them and why we can't understand them and stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't really know why, but um, it looks like in the script they actually had. Proper proper dialogue, mm. because there's someone in the when they were filming it, there was someone off camera reading their dialogue. Oh. But then they obviously decided for some reason to cut the dialogue and just have the bubbles. Oh. So I don't know why they decided that, but maybe the bubbles mean something. Yeah, they do. But what I'm saying is, it's it's written in the script, so it was intended for us to be able to understand yeah, it. So the... they're doing that for the other actors' benefit, so they know what oh. they're saying. Then I don't know that. But I just, I don't understand why they originally intended for us to know what they were saying and then they changed their minds. Yeah, who knows? But yes, I think that's it for today. Are you excited for Silence in the Library? Yeah, that sounds all right. It is a Moffat episode, which... It's a Moffy ep. Which we know you're generally a fan of. Yeah. And I will say you will get to meet a character who's going to be very significant. Susan back. No, but we'll see. Darla Peregrine Moon. No. I don't know who that is. Um, anything more you'd like to add? No, but just stay cool, stay safe, stay, stay fantastic. fantastic, stay fantastic. <laughs>